So number one, we see the goodness of God in creation. Number two, we see it in God's providence. The word providence means to supply what is needed to give sustenance or support. And the first mention of the word providence is found in Genesis chapter 22 where God had tested Abraham and said, take your son, your only son whom you love and go offer him as a burnt sacrifice on a mountain that I will show you. And so he takes the son and he gets ready. He, he go, goes in order to sacrifice the son. On the way, his, his son Isaac says, Dad, I see the wood, I see the knife, I see the fire, I see everything. But where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And Abraham confidently, without hesitation, did not fumble for words, looked at him and he said, Son, God will provide. The word provide comes from two Latin words which means to see beforehand or to see ahead. The, the, the word provide comes from two Latin words. And one of the Latin words, videf, is which we get the English word video, which means to see. And the other word means beforehand or ahead. So when he said, God will provide, he is saying, God will see to it that everything is taken care of. That means before the need ever arises in your life, God has already seen it and has made provision. Come on, talk to me. God is not just saying, oh, he needs that, you know. On Wednesday, he'll need, uh, you know, protection from what could have been an accident. No, no. God is not just seeing ahead. But what he sees ahead, he makes provision ahead. Oh, come on. That is why Abraham called the place uh, Yahweh Ire. Because the word Yahweh Ire, which is in the English Jehovah Jireh, means God has seen ahead. That means when he told Abraham, take your son, your only son, whom you love and go offer him up. Listen, what was he doing? He was saying... Take him and go and offer him. But before Abraham could take his son, God had already placed his son. Do you see that? Because when Abraham reached there, was about to kill his son and God stopped him and God said, don't do it. What, what did God say? He says, don't do it. I have seen your faithfulness. Then the Bible says, Abraham looked and there was a ram caught in the thicket. Glory to God. Uh-uh. God provided ahead because God saw ahead. May I say to you that you can count on God's goodness because the goodness of God who sees beforehand has also made, you know, supply beforehand. That is, before you ever fall sick, God has provided healing before you fell sick. Amen. Amen. 2,000 years ago, Jesus provided healing on the cross, victory on the cross, deliverance on the cross, peace on the cross, joy on the cross. Whatever you need today has been provided 2,000 years ago. Why? Because He is Yahweh Yireh. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is the God who saw ahead and provided, supplied your need before the need ever came. He's a majestic God. Before you have a need, he sees the need and he makes provision for the need so that when you get into the need and cry to God, God says, just turn and see. My blessing is waiting on you. When you're sick, he says, turn and see. My healing is waiting on you. When you feel lonely, he says, turn and see. I am your companion. When, when you feel that you're confused, he says, turn and see. My peace is waiting on you. When you're sorrowing in heart, God says, turn and see. My joy is waiting on you. When you're going through hopeless situations, God says, turn and see. You can see miracles and signs and wonders are caught in the thicket. It's caught. It's packaged and kept for you. Why? Because the goodness of God is seen in the providence of God. He will supply what is needed. Please listen. God's providence is God's caring provision for his people. As he guides them. 
in their journey of faith through life, accomplishing his purpose in them. That he makes caring provision for you as you journey through life. He guides you to your destiny by accomplishing his purpose in your life. Providence. That's what providence means. Amen. And when Adam and Eve fell in the garden of Eden, they and the devil thought, that's it. God will no longer provide. But the devil and Adam and Eve were in for a surprise. They found out that even after the fall, God had never abandoned, you know, Adam and Eve, but continued to make provision for them. This is what I'm talking about. That even after the fall, God has not abandoned us. Even till today, my brothers and sisters, he continues to care for us and provide for us. He continues to care for you and provide for you. Hallelujah. The only reason you're being blessed today is because he cares for you. There is no, it's not because you are good. It's not because you pray a lot. No, 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 no. It's because God is good. He's the greatest provider. You will never run out of resources as long as God is your source. Amen? You will never run out of resources as long as God is your source. God is the source of all our resources, church. Acts 14 verse 17, please. Nevertheless, he did not leave himself without witness. In that he did good. Gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons. Filling our hearts with food and gladness. Paul is preaching, you know, to some, uh, you know, people who were atheistic and, you know, they were, they were all intellectuals and he was trying to get them to see, you know, the, the, the folly or the foolishness of their, you know, attitude. And he was saying, you know, that in spite of all that their rebellion, God did not leave himself without, without a witness. B meaning that he did not, you know, leave himself without trying to prove to them, giving them testimony of his, you know, existence. And how did he do it? He, in that he did good. What was the good? He gave us rain from heaven and fruitful season, filling our hearts with food and gladness when we didn't know him. Now, let me ask you, how many of you, okay, how many of you before you got saved had three meals on your table before you got saved? Come on. The rest of you? No. No, 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 please. Let me ask you again. Don't leave me out here alone, please. <laughs> How many of you before you got saved had good things provided for you from God? I have to call up the hands that never went up. Maybe I'll ask you to do a Sunday school action song. One last. I'm just teasing you. All of us, whether you lift your hand or not, all of us have to admit the fact that we have received immense good from God before we were saved. Day in and day out, you enjoyed good in spite of you being in sin and, you know, an enemy of God. Why? That's the goodness of God. He doesn't wait for you to believe in him before he blesses you. He blesses you even when you didn't believe there is a God. He could have taken away your breath and said, you know, you don't need to breathe anymore because you don't believe in me. I'm going to take your breath away. No, he didn't do that. He kept allowing you to breathe until today you're breathing and every breath is saying, Jesus, I love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your every breath is saying, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Your every breath is saying, Abba, Abba, Father, my daddy, I love you. That's what it is, my brothers and sisters. Goodness of God is seen in the providence of God. Number three, let's move to the third one. Number three, we see it in redemption. We see it in creation. We see it in his providence. And number three, we see the goodness of God in redemption. This is the most beautiful part of God's goodness. Please listen. Jesus is the goodness of God in the flesh. If you see goodness in the flesh, it's in the form of Jesus. 
Not in the form of Colin De Cruz. Oh no, he is far from good. If there is goodness in the flesh, it's because Jesus is the goodness of God in the flesh. What do you mean by that? He demonstrated God's desire to pour out his blessing in deliverance to all of us. He demonstrated God's desire to pour out his blessing in deliverance to all of us. Everything that Jesus did was to demonstrate the desire of God to pour out his blessing in deliverance to all of us. So Jesus is God's goodness in the flesh. And in redemption, Jesus took the judgment that our sin rightly deserved upon himself. In redemption, Jesus took the judgment that our sin deserves upon himself. Romans 5, 8 please. Demonstrates his own love toward us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In other words, Jesus took our place. He became our atoning sacrifice. He was our atonement for the sins we committed. If today you go into the holy presence of God and God accepts you, it's because Jesus atoned for your sin. Jesus propitiated for your sin. Jesus paid the just demands of our holy and righteous God for our sin. That's why you can go today and say, Abba, Father. That's why you can call him Daddy and have a smile on your face without any fear or guilt and without wondering whether it's right to call him Daddy or not. That's why I don't use the word Father, you know, in my personal prayers. When I use it here, I use it, you know, just for language sake. But let me tell you, in my personal time with the Lord, in, in, whether I'm talking or praying, I'm always using the word Daddy. Because the word Daddy is closer to me than the word Father. That's why Jesus said Abba. Abba means Daddy. Not just Father, Daddy. It's an it's a endearing word. Abba, Father, which means Daddy. So the atoning, Jesus became the atoning sacrifice for us. Now, this is the great part about our redemption that God has given us. That Jesus paid the price and gave us the goodness of God to enjoy for the rest of our life in redemption. You see, redemption is not just God, you know, bringing you out of the slave market of sin and then, you know, saying, okay, go... Chalo, chalo. No, 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 he didn't do that. He brought you out and then he delivered you from the slave master. He said, now go on your way and live freely. But he just didn't send you empty. He sent you packaged with the goodness of God all through your life. And now it has been for some of you, you know, five years and 10 years and 20 years. And for some of you, 40 years and 50 years, you've been walking with the Lord. And every day for the last 50 years, you've been enjoying the goodness of God. And before that, when you never got saved, you enjoyed the goodness of God. Why? Because of redemption. He became the sacrifice so that you can enjoy the goodness of God. Oh, yeah. Write this statement down and uh, we will close. Jesus includes a thousand other things in this redemption that God has given us. So not just salvation from sin. Jesus includes a thousand other things, and I can say 10,000 or a million or 10 million or 100 million or 1 billion. I can keep going, but just for a figure I'm giving you. Jesus includes a thousand other things in this redemption that God has given to us. Which means whatever you need for life is provided in redemption. You never have to wonder, am I worthy to receive it or not? Because none of us are worthy to receive anything. But because of redemption, I have been made worthy to receive it. Amen? 
Everybody say, I am worthy to receive the blessings of God. I'm worthy to be healed. Why? Because of redemption, right? It's because of redemption. I don't deserve anything. But I enjoy everything from the goodness of God. Why? Because God has redeemed me. He just didn't buy me from the slave market of sin, but he gave me everything. Thousand of the things that I ever need for goodness, for life and godliness. So my brothers and sisters, I want you to be like David and say, even though there is war and people are wanting to kill me, defame me and dethrone me, he says, yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living.